Hey everyone and welcome back to Inferno, where in the previous episode we took our regular old vanilla bees here, which I noticed we were actually missing a pipe over here, and we turned the regular vanilla bees into all of these different modded bees. Wait, this way, yeah, the corridor is just so large, allowing us to automate things like diamonds, things like coal and iron, and also emeralds and a few of the mob props as well. We also made one or two additions to the mine colony, and we made a start on the occultism mod, something we'll be focusing on today. I really really would like to get dimensional mass storage. Dimensional occultism storage is almost like applied energistics. I see a mob through there. Hey drop bear. <laughs> one shot. <laughs> It's almost as good as Applied Energistics, which actually we might be able to get today. But even if we can get Applied Energistics, we definitely want to make use of both of these. Since drives are disabled, this can almost act like our drives. However, there's a few other things we have to do before we can make this happen. The first of which is wait on these guys crushing coal. And the coal gets crafted into carbon fibre and gets alloy kilned with the netherite scrap. Then we pour over some molten diamond. And the resultant diamond lattice we can put through the alchemy array along with spirit attuned gems, and we should get the crystals from this. And these extra crystals we're going to use for another ritual here. Looks like this one is just white and golden chalk. Oops, that's not white chalk. Just white and golden chalk for this one. Oh, I was going to say we need a few more sacrificial bowls. Uh, looks like I had them crafted already. And that is why you batch craft. <laughs> And so now for the quest we want the dimensional storage actuator, which comes from the actuator base and all we need is 4 gold ingots and a pedestal. I wonder if it's worth making multiple of these, I'm not sure. Let's start with one though and see what the situation is. And I think for this it's a book of folio which we bind with our dictionary of spirits again. Hello? I always forget how slow these things are, but yes it is working, okay. Nice, that gives us the actuator base. But the quest wants us to make the dimensional storage actuator, which also means we need the crystal matrix. This time it's going to be with Strigir's higher binding, the ritual we built at the end of last episode. We need some cactus for this one. Luckily we have it grown here. And this time it's going to be an ender pearl and three blocks of quartz. And this should start the ritual. Yes. Ah, there we go. And this I think is just a shapeless craft. And this should be our quest. Awesome. But as I understand it, this is a multi-block structure. So along with the base, we also need the dimensional storage stabilizers, of which there is four tiers. Can we go all the way up to tier four? No, we need a dragon head. Can we get tier three? We need a nether star. Can we get can we get tier two? Oh, we might be able to get tier two, actually. And tier one? Yeah, tier one is easy. We have both of these rituals, Strigir's Higher Binding and the Spectral Compulsion, which is the one we just set up here. We're going to start off with four of these stabilizers, each one able to increase the capacity of the storage. I think we can go up to six though. Either way, it's going to take a little bit of crafting. One thing that all of the occultism crafts have in common is we need some sort of book and quill, and that requires a feather. So I guess why not add the chicken farmer's hut? Look at this texture. That is awesome. It's getting to a point maybe where we have to add some more housing. I'm not sure we have enough guys to actually work this building. And it's also going to take some time for the builders to actually finalise that build, so let's just do this manually here. We are investing in the future though. Oh, those chickens from Nomi Factory. <laughs> Bringing back memories. Anyways, let's grab some more source gems. Maybe this is something we can get fully automated today. The bees once again helping us out with the bone meal, which we can turn into white dye. And this can allow us to craft the books of foliots. We need four of these, I guess. And we should have everything else for tier one. Blaze powder, other stone pedestals, block of copper, and the occultism gems. There's one. Wow, that was so quick with the time in a bottle there. And so I crafted up all of the stabilizers, and with a little bit of extra crafting and gathering, we were able to get four tier two stabilizers. Alright, so believe it or not, this is actually the first time I've ever used this dimensional storage. That looks amazing, especially with the shaders. Does it look like that by default? I'm not sure. I think it's two blocks out, right? Yeah, two to five blocks. The stabilizers have to be placed on all four sides. I think it can actually go all six sides. And so with three of these, we get 1664 slots. If we add the fourth, it goes up to 2176. That's actually not too bad. And yeah, there's even a search bar. It looks like we got different kinds of sorting. Obviously a crafting table, and I don't know what this does. Some sort of processing pattern, maybe, for auto-crafting. I think there is auto-crafting capabilities in this. But the applied energistics auto-crafting, I think, is going to be better for us. I could just be biased, though. But, I mean, who doesn't like AE? Oh my goodness. Guys, we did it. 
look at what they added to the pack. We got laser IO here. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy about this. <laughs> so I literally just updated to 1.0.3. And we got some exciting changes in this update here. First of all, they enabled all of the quests. And by that, I mean made them all visible. There were so many times that I went into a creative world just to check where the quest went, because it's really, really hard to plan your progression when you can't see the quests. They also should have fixed the mine schematic so that this hole disappears. I think the fences should actually be around here. So we have to make sure we repair this building. And similarly, there has also been some changes to the university. So we have to repair this one as well. I hope we have all the materials for this. I think they changed some of these middle pedestal items here. Also, it finally happened. Our mob farm has been completely gutted. <laughs> no more OP loot. Oh, and they removed the glass, apparently. The glass here is gone. So all of the rare drops from the Infernal mobs have been moved to player kill only. There's no other way to get that, so we can't get it from our spell turret anymore. Yeah, it seems that it's only magma cream we're getting now from this thing. Wait a second, why is there bees here? Oh, the glass was, he oh, the glass was here as well. <laughs> why is the glass gone? I don't understand. Yeah, so despite the fact that our mob farm is completely nerfed now, I'm still happy about Laser IO. I mean, that alone is reason to update, but there's been a bunch of other very, very nice changes. However, now that we can see all the quests, we can actually see where exactly we need to go here. And speaking of applied energistics, I think that we actually rushed this to integrate it into our occultism storage, and we might as well set up both at the same time, since that is our ultimate goal with both of these mods. And we can also have it integrate into this warehouse. And finally, I think today is the day we get all of this cleaned up. Yeah, most of this is going to end up getting trashed, honestly, all this armor and things. But now that we have occultism storage, we should have somewhere for all this to go. And also, it seems to craft the lasers from Laser IO, we also need to get the engineer's processor from Applied Energistics, as well as vacuum tubes, actually, from Immersive Engineering. Yeah, and all of these need blueprints and multi blocks. We have got a lot to do today. So, one of the many things we need for Applied Energistics is Skystone. We don't have any Skystone or any way to get it. So in Inferno, we have to go through the Occultism Dimensional Mineshaft. And to craft these, among other things, we were going to need quite a bit of Isnium. Isnium we can find in the Nether as Ore, so long as we have the third eye effect and an Isnium pickaxe. And we can actually double the ore if we give it to the Crushers. And so once we convert the dust into ingots and collect the rest of the materials, we can use our existing rituals to craft the Dimensional Mineshaft and the Genie Miner. So if I'm not wrong, all we have to do is actually just place this on top of a hopper. I think a hopper works. Dimensional mineshaft. This thing has a UI and we put the genie inside the mineshaft. Now this ore miner does have a durability, so I enchanted it with Unbreaking 8. Yeah, Unbreaking 8 and Mending. The enchantments on this thing I actually took from the Elytra. I used the Tome of Scrapping. There is only a 0.5% chance at Skystone, although we will get all of these other nice things. Oh, including zinc. That's going to be awesome for when we start create. And aluminium from this, which means we can add it to the bees. But yeah, while we're on the topic of the bees, I decided to take some time and set up the simulator upgrades. You may remember from last episode, to craft these things, we were going to need quite a few emeralds and diamonds, which we now have from our bees. And so we used those materials along with honeycomb to invest in the simulator upgrades. And we got a simulator in every single beehive. So yeah, what is our next steps? Where do we go from here? Well, we have to continue to unlock Applied Energistics. We have to get our hands on some silicon, which I believe we can actually get from the old mob farm. Not directly, but we do get Ceres Quartz Dust, which can just be smelted here. And that should give us silicon directly. And the quest. And as early as possible, I do want to pick up the silicon bee, not something I got last episode. Nomad plus reed bee. And I assume their flower block is... Oh, it's a block of quartz. Yeah, all of the bees I used for breeding should be in here. The reed bee plus the nomad bee is going to give us the silicon bees. We have two right now. They are still children, but I think they can grow inside a simulated hive. I hope that's the case. It's so, so easy to add new bees at this point, though, since we invested so heavily in infrastructure. Assuming they turn into adults, everything should be centrifuged and we're getting passive silicon now. It should end up in one of these drawers at some point. Wait, it's already here. Did they produce combs as children? I didn't think that was the case. Oh, yeah, let's make sure we lock this. Yeah, we have to continue to unlock Applied Energistics. There's quite a lot of progression required here before we can even set any of this up. But I really, really would like to have access to our AE system. So we also need Certus Quartz Crystals. These are made with the seeds as normal. And then we have to grow these normally in water. Although I think in this pack, the quest book says we have to use blood. At least maybe not put it here because the citizens are going to pick them up. Yeah, at least in the beginning here, we have to grow it in Biomes of Plenty Blood. And it's going to take 20 minutes to fully mature into the regular crystal. At which point, I think there is also a B for it. I could be... No, it doesn't look like there is. Okay. Not sure how we're going to go about doing that late game. Regardless of that, we do need the circuits next. And to get these, we need the engineer's workbench. 
This is a very unique recipe. I haven't seen anything like this before. And to get the workbench, we're going to have to make use of creosote oil. Normally, it's just a bucket surrounded with some planks. Because of the treated wood, I don't know if we need this long term. And so I don't know if we need to set these up permanently. Anyways, we are going to need an engineer's crafting table. And we'll also have to make use of our mechanic. I think he should know the recipe by default. Ah, uh, wait a second. It might be in the post box here. Yeah, the post box can make any open request. I think so long as the citizens know how to craft it. It looks like it is recognised that the mechanic needs to craft all these things. And I think we won't deliver what's available. I haven't used this much, to be honest. I'm not, still not familiar with exactly how this works. And so now the mechanic is going to be looking for the engineer's crafting table, two treated wood and an iron ingot. I'm fairly confident we have an iron ingot somewhere in the warehouse, but just to make sure I'm going to input this manually. And so the courier should deliver him all the items. He should craft it and it should appear in the post box here. I'm hoping. Hey, Julian, are you the courier? I forget. Aha, we got it. The engineer's workbench, awesome. So this thing can actually be used as a villager trade or a villager profession block, but I guess we can also use it in the UI ourselves. There is of course an automated version of that workbench later on, but we need the crafting components. And yeah, this is the blueprint we need to craft all of the circuits here. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else we need to get AE. Looks like the energy acceptor is another blacksmith craft, but we can make that happen. And once we got our sky stone and the processors, we should be good to go here. Wow, what you just saw there was around a three hour time lapse. There have been quite a number of changes. The first is that I missed the fact that we could have a Certus Quartz B. So that has been added in here. And I also just got our first piece of Fluix for Applied Energistics. The Fluix Dust is just the default recipe. And we got the first few pieces of Charged Quartz from the quest. So I want to use this to invest in the bees. We have to craft up two Fluix Pearls. And I have two of the spare Spatial Bees, as they're called, the Certus Bees. I think we just click them with the Pearls and it converts them, nice. Let's put them back in the bee cages. We should have the simulator upgrade in here already. And the flower block is just Fluix blocks. Nice, so we should be getting passive Fluix and passive Ceres. The second change is that we're starting to get the first of our tier three buildings. So we got a tier three mechanics, which of course means that we have to have at least one tier three builder's hut. I think this belongs to Kaylee. Jensen is still tier two back there. I also made sure to go around and upgrade all of the houses at least to tier two. I think later on I'm going to add a bunch more houses just to increase our capacity on villagers. And right now we're working on getting the tier 3 warehouse. Tier 3 warehouse actually comes with some extra features as you guys pointed out. We are yet to sort all of the stock in here. Don't worry, I'm going to do it this episode. <laughs> I'm not going to put it off any longer. I noticed though that Kaylee is missing a few more materials. It's all still very manual. This took up the bulk of the time. Jungle wood is not something that we currently have. And I was wondering what the spare bonsai pot I counted out earlier is for. And conveniently in 1.0.3, they added this quest for the sapling, which gives us a jungle. I'm actually going to take that for sure. And what was it? One to four jungle stairs? Very random, but we can at least fulfill this now. So we are almost at the point where we can start having some fun. I really want to get the grind out of the way. The next quest is to craft all the AE components. Although actually, we do get the cables from the mob farm. And since we get most of the base materials from bees now, we should be able to batch craft a lot of this. I did start to craft a lot of the circuits. And the final step, we can actually just do in a regular crafting table, which is nice. We don't need an inscriber. So yeah, let me craft up a bunch of materials and we can start to set up applied energistics. All right, here is our first two ME controllers. We have a handful of storage buses from the mob farm. The quest reward actually gives us a decent amount of components here. We are also going to need a terminal. Quest gives us the pattern access and the pattern encoding terminal, which is nice. Inventory space though. <laughs> One really, really awesome feature of Inferno is that all AE channels have been boosted by 4x. Right, so normally in AE, these things can only carry eight channels, whereas here it acts like a dense cable and can carry 32. And by extension, the dense cables go up to 128. So normally I do P2P connections. I don't think that's gonna be necessary here. We might just be able to get away with a single controller setup and avoid the subnet. However, that brings us on to our next problem. Where on earth are we gonna put this? 
somewhere that needs to integrate with occultism storage. And we also have to retroactively fit in cables around this base. So this step here is always very important, integrating AE into your base. And so after a lot of consideration, I decided that we wanted things a bit separated, but I still wanted the AE controller to be as central as possible. And since we're not doing subnets, we should make it easy to run multiple connections to various points around the base. So I started off with the occultism storage, I put that in a room opposite Blood Magic. All we need to do is set this up and be able to run an AE connection to have a storage bus connected. We don't actually need to interact with this ourselves once it's set up and connected to AE. But once that was built, I moved on to the main controller build itself, which I figured was best underneath our main storage intersection. The decision not to use the subnets actually makes this quite easy, we can just plug the cables into one controller. There is also one more consideration and that is power in the system, which I have a feeling might change over time, so we are just going to go with a temporary solution for now. You know, at least for me, Applied Energistics never ever gets old. I love this part of the game. So I spent a little bit of time here setting up some infrastructure. We got the Occultism Digital Storage set up. And connected underneath here is a storage bus. We've got this on priority zero. This is just going to be a neutral storage container, since we want most of the storage to go into drawers. But we'll get onto that later on. So downstairs, through the access tunnel, we have the wire here, which comes from the storage bus. And that goes all the way to the middle intersection, which houses our controller. Because we have limited Skystone, we can only afford three right now, which is plenty for the time being. We have two dense energy cells we got from the quest, which appear to be staying full, which is good. But the power for now, we're using vibration chambers from Applied Energistics. These basically just act like furnace generators. These vibration chambers, though, are completely awful. We'll definitely want to switch away from these when we expand our AE system, because each of these is only like 8 RF per tick. That's terrible. And something else that's actually pretty terrible here is I noticed for the laser nodes we need sheet metal, and we need iron plates. I didn't clock this earlier on, and for that we need either immersive engineering, industrial contraptions, or create, and none of these mods we have access to yet. So we have to continue to rely on pretty pipes for now. The fuel for this is coming from this drawer, and this drawer here is actually entangled. The other end of this is connected to these three drawers right here. So we just have a retrieval module which pulls basically anything it can from here and that will go to fuel the vibration chambers. So now if we look inside our AE system we can see all the contents inside the occultism digital storage. There isn't too much in there right now, I was careful not to put too much in since I want most of it to go into drawers. I'm not really sure why exactly they disabled the drives to be perfectly honest, because we're basically just using a workaround to do the exact same thing. <laughs> Anyways, I have also started running channels here to- oops, you didn't see this nether rack here. Yeah, I've started running channels here to be able to connect up all of the drawer controllers, which are all going to be on high priority. The higher the number here, the higher the insertion priority. Although we should definitely make sure we lock all of these drawers. This one is empty. I think I have to go around and actually reconfigure a lot of these drawers. We set these up when we had way fewer items and I've, it's ended up where I've actually been sticking most of the stuff in chests. But yeah, for now we're just going to place the drawer controller and lock all of the drawers. So because this is also on a higher priority than the occultism digital storage, it means that if we take something out or we auto craft something, it's going to pull from the digital storage first, which means we should be able to keep that relatively clean of items. Let's see, how do we want to do this? Straight cables, I think. Yeah, so it's just going to be the same for both sides here. This one's going to be a bit easier to hook up since we don't have the vibration chambers in the way. Nice. Clean. I like it. <laughs> and you guys know me, I do like to decorate the access tunnels like this. Even if it is just for wires and nobody's ever going to be down here, it still makes a difference. It, it just feels better when you have a base that's complete. And I think it's also a good idea to clean up as you go rather than having it all to do at the end, which is something I, the mis a mistake I've made in the past one too many times. So yeah, now just to verify, if we open up the AE system, we should see the contents of all the drawers, and there is way fewer items than I thought we had. I guess, I guess most of it is in the chest there. And some of it is also in the warehouse, which we definitely want to be able to hook up to our AE system. This building is now tier 3. Interesting choice with the dark oak stairs. I never would have put these next to warped. I don't know how I feel about this, honestly. But yeah, as I mentioned, there is actually a sorting system inside here. There is this sort button inside the warehouse, and it splits up all the items into, like, for example, this one looks like it's all food items. I'm not sure why there's a golden nugget in there. I think maybe the fisher pulls up the golden nuggets. Yeah, I did make sure to remove all of the garbage from here, though. 
all of those trinkets and armor, those are all gone. And by the way, I'm not sure why our smeltery isn't processing all of these ores. I've noticed this a few times where things just stay as ore and I don't know, our smeltery is just lazy. He has plenty of fuel, or at least he should. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, honestly. Instead of running a cable directly up to this warehouse block, I'm not sure exactly where our AE system is in relation to this. I think it's somewhere around here. Instead, we're actually just going to entangle it. And I'm told that we can actually put storage buses directly on entangled blocks. So long as something that it's entangled to can actually receive a storage bus. Yeah, let's try this out here. I'm going to make sure we put this on extract only. Wait, that's the filter. Here, extract only. And so now we should see the contents of the warehouse. Yeah, definitely. We didn't have apples anywhere. I know that for a fact. Or rotten flesh. So there is one issue of doing it like this, and that is I'm not exactly sure how we keep this warehouse clean. I've been thinking about this for like the past week. How are we going to manage this so that we keep all the items in here that the villagers will need, but we also can keep it empty enough so that they will have space to put items that they produce? Because our farmers produce things like raw meat, and the miners get the ore, the sifters uh, sift various dirt blocks and get things like saplings. So yeah, we need to keep enough space in here, but we also can't just pull everything out because the villagers need access to a lot of these items. And I think the variety of items that we're dealing with here is just way too large, meaning that we can't like filter every single one of these things. So I'm really not sure what the solution is. Maybe we just leave it alone and we just upgrade this all the way to tier five to have enough storage. I do hope that makes sense. If you guys have a solution though, let me know. But we are not quite finished connecting everything yet. Obviously we have the outputs of all the bees. Let's just make sure all of these are locked before we plug them in. The drawer controllers for these systems are also gonna be entangled and hooked up over here with a storage bus. Again, on extract only. Ah, uh, you know, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to label these two. A sign though is kind of lame. Oh, wait a second, I might have an idea. If we can name the storage buses, does that keep the name in the... No, it doesn't. I was hoping it would be labelled up here, but it... I guess that isn't the case. I suppose in that case, we will just do a sign for now. This one is B Drawer 2. Very original name. Yeah, and so now everything should be connected up here. Perfect. We see all the B outputs. That's more like it. <laughs> We're looking a bit more uh, healthy on resources now. There is, I guess, three B drawers though, so we should leave an extra entangled block for that. This third one here is actually empty though, so we'll leave it until we have this populated. The other drawer network we have in our base is the mob farm, which of course we can also entangle, give an entangled block and hook up a storage bus. Again, we'll put this on extract only. Actually, maybe not. Maybe we put this on bi-directional. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on high priority actually. Yeah, this is already filler to hold a, a decent amount of items, although we do have void upgrades on these. Maybe since we don't get the drops from the, the mobs anymore, I'm going to remove the void upgrades. Just so that when we drop things into our AE system, it doesn't end up in here and overfill in void. Also make sure to give it a label here. Perfect, and now we also have access to all the things from the mob farm. I hope now you can see how powerful this is and the implications of connecting all the storage together. There is just one more system we have to hook up to storage, and that is the bonsai outputs. These we are going to put on high priority, and they should all be locked already. I just connected all the drawers together with trim. Drawer trim is basically just like drawer cabling, a very bulky cable. And we should be able to cover up all of this underneath here now. This all joins the central line and goes back to the main controller. And yeah, we also have the cobblestone and the wood, everything from the bonsais as well. So before we finish off today, I realized that we were missing one of the most important bees here. We actually don't have an ancient bee to produce nether, right? I would like to get that up as soon as possible. And there's also a little experiment. I did put a babi upgrade. Ah, it, do it looks like it does work. Yeah, so we had two diamond bees in here a few hours ago. This upgrade here gives us a 5% chance of a new baby bee to be spawned. And it looks like this also confirms the theory that children do actually grow up in a simulated hive. So yeah, to make the netherite bee, we just give a diamond bee a netherite block. And these guys are going to get their own apiary. I think we have to put these guys back inside though. We'll need two more blocks for the feeding slab. And these guys can go next to aluminium. I think because we don't have those drawers locked anymore, we will have to set the combs manually. Is this only a chance output? I guess it is only 10% chance of netherite scrap. That's pretty bad. <laughs> we have a few spare productivity upgrades in here. There's no use keeping them in the chest. We might as well implement them into the hives. I think definitely on netherite. Probably also diamond. We can stack a few on this. Maybe we give a few to redstone as well since this is our only source of redstone. Although, that being said, we also get it from the genie miner here, which has actually been doing work. This kind of gives you an idea how long I've been at this episode. <laughs> All of this took a very long time to figure out. So the original plan wasn't actually to put the occultism storage here. I was actually going to put it underground here. But the reason this is orange is, in fact, this, is, this connects down to bees right here. 
That is the centrifuges right down there. So we're getting pretty close with a, with a lot of this stuff as it wasn't originally planned out to be this way. And the other thing is actually we're running into the bees this way. Like all this is on top of the roof of the bee system. It kind of makes me happy we have these entangled blocks we can make use of here. Anyways, with that, we are also going to wrap up today's episode. Unfortunately, we didn't get any auto crafting done. Auto crafting is going to increase the power usage. In fact, we're already up to 70 RF per tick. We are probably only just able to keep that running with the vibration chambers we have. But I think next episode, our priority is to look into a new power source, of which there is very few options. So I'm not actually sure what we end up going with. Maybe a nuclear reactor. That might be on the cards for next episode. We'll see. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.